Good evening, this is the Oscar expert here at the Cannes Film Festival, and it's time to review The Zone of Interest. This is the newest film from Jonathan Glazer, a fairly experimental filmmaker known best for his last film, Under the Skin. Came out a whole decade ago, and he is back with a Holocaust film, but not what you think when I say that. The movie is actually about the camp commandant of Auschwitz and his family striving to build a dream home and garden right next to the camp. And when I say next to the camp, I mean they literally share a wall with it. And we never really cross that wall. The movie is basically about... Nazis hanging out in their beautiful house. The movie is basically an examination of or a meditation on evil. It wants to give us a different perception of what evil can look like. And the scary part about it is that it looks very familiar. At first glance, this family is basically like any other peaceful nuclear family. The father goes about his work and provides for his family while the mother stays home and tends to things around the house and the garden. You can look as closely as you want, but I, I don't think these people recognize themselves as evil. So if this is what evil looks like, how would you know when you're looking at evil? Evil. How would you know if you're participating in evil? It's not portraying evil in the ways that we expect movies to present evil to us. And I think we like evil to look a certain way because it's comforting to know that it will be very easy to recognize or to see villains acting like villains. Stylistically, I think this movie is totally singular. You can maybe compare it a little bit to how a Michelle Hanukkah film looks. The camera placements give the movie this detached observational style. It's not about immersing us in anybody's perspective. It just wants us to watch watch this family with their children and their dog going about their day. The look of the lenses used is very sharp, digital, and sterile. The movie brilliantly avoids a glamorous or pretty look. It doesn't fetishize the period aesthetics whatsoever. It actually looks like it was shot today, just with costumes and period details from the past. And that's very purposeful. It removes the distance between then and now in a way that I feel like I haven't seen in a period film. The cinematography is not about crafting beautiful images in the way that you might expect from Lucas Zal, whose work includes, I'm thinking of anything's Cold War and Ida, all of which are full of beautiful images. But in terms of the function of the cinematography and what it's communicating, it's impeccable. And in fact, I didn't realize this during the movie, but apparently they placed many different cameras around this house at the same time. Every craft on display is brilliant. The sound design of the movie is faint distant screams and gunshots from over the wall. All of the horrors of the movie are just muffled and quiet, which makes them even more terrifying. And none of the sounds phase the adults or the children in the house. It's just there. The sounds are as expected as hearing birds chirping. The production design, the sterile dry interiors of the home, and the luscious colorful outdoor garden will be burned into your mind, especially the garden, which holds a lot of symbolic significance. And the score from Mika Levi is just a work of genius. Most of the music is actually in the opening and the credits, where we're really just staring at a black screen listening to the score. But these two pieces are so creative, haunting, and stunning. Like, the music that plays over the end credits is just like the craziest piece of music. The rest of the movie is mostly absent of score, except for the occasional eerie, repetitive booms or, or, or moos. I don't really know what to call them, but it's this strange foreign sound courtesy, once again, of Mika Levi's impeccable soundcraft. They leave a huge mark on the movie with just minimal work. Glazer occasionally shakes things up from focusing just on the family in ways that will give viewers something else to interpret and consider. Some of his choices are really bold and jarring in the way that they break away from the style. And these moments stay with you and add a lot to the movie. I didn't even really talk much about the story or plot because it's just the loosest bit of one. It doesn't so much feel like it's about the characters, it's more of just a portrait of this family. Sandra Huller is probably the standout performance if I were to pick one, but all the performances I think feel more in service of the big picture. And I'm not sure if I've properly conveyed yet that like this movie is experimental. It is not trying to offer you a satisfying viewing experience. It's not feeding you an emotional climax. You as the viewer are gonna have to put in a lot of the work while watching it and reflect on what the movie is making you think about. Minor warning here, I'm gonna go a little deeper into the movie to talk about some of the ideas that it made me think of. It's not exactly spoilers, but you may wanna go into the movie a little more fresh and not hear me talk about what ideas it's exploring and kind of find out for yourself. So if you don't want to hear me talking about that, then you can skip to this point in the video. I think there are a lot of layers to this movie, especially how it comments on the incentivizing power of wealth, the fact that being a Nazi is just a career. It made me consider how scary it might be that 
our politicians are wealthy and how corruptible entire economic systems are. It made me think about how we decorate our lives to avoid confronting the suffering of the world and how people can become desensitized. This family may have a literal wall between them and the atrocities, but in a sense, there's always like a wall between us and tragedy. But what's stunning about the movie is that it made me feel like I might even be on one side of that wall. The movie is so timeless and universal. It's not just about how we can learn lessons from the Holocaust so that we can prevent this from happening again, which is kind of the message we might expect in a Holocaust movie. This movie is about our world right now and always. I also appreciate that at an hour 45, the movie certainly doesn't overstay its welcome. Initially, I came out thinking maybe this was a nine out of 10 because I couldn't say that I like enjoyed it or loved it, but really not every movie is made to get that reaction. This is a singular work of art that I got a lot out of. The technique and craft of the filmmaking here is astonishing. Astonishing. Every production choice is worthy of being dissected. I feel like I've never seen anything like it and it will probably go down as one of the greatest achievements of filmmaking this year. Like if this movie came out in the 70s, I would bet that it would be on the sight and sound top 100 by now. It's like as worthy of studying as anything I've ever been shown in a film class. And honestly, it's only a matter of time before the legacy of this movie is cemented. The zone of interest gets a 10 out of 10 from me. It feels kind of weird to do with this movie, but since I am the Oscar expert and you're probably wondering, we must talk awards. Movie has a 99 on Metacritic. That is rare. It will probably be the most acclaimed movie of the year, at least like from critics, and it will probably win the Palme d'Or. You may be able to look at the acclaim and the subject matter of this movie and say, well, easily that's an awards thing, but I think you have to start at a place of skepticism for something like this. Again, this is like hardcore and art house movie. It's very much not going to be everybody's thing. Some people are going to say, well, that was just like a museum piece. My initial thought of the movie was like, no, that's, that's not going to get a Best Picture nomination. Maybe it can get international feature. Maybe it gets director. Maybe it gets cinematography. Maybe it's like Cold War or something. But then I thought about it more and not only do I feel weirdly like really confident that it will get a Best Director nomination, but I actually do think that I'll be predicting it in Best Picture. It's going to remain one of the buzziest titles of the year. People are going to seek it out at any other film festival it plays at. Despite it being experimental, it is very clear in what it's trying to communicate and I think it could be embraced in spite of its abrasive style. It's very much not like any other contender or movie that's been nominated before. It would be one of the most adventurous picks that the Oscars could go for. But a movie like this doesn't feel like it comes along that often or a movie this acclaimed. Maybe it just captures that international contingent of voters the people who liked Drive My Car, Triangle of Sadness, and The Tree of Life or Amour more than other awards bodies did. Maybe this movie doesn't even get PGA, DGA, Golden Globe nominations. Maybe it misses Critics' Choice nominations, but it still has a pretty good day at the Oscars. The cinematographer's branch seems more willing than other branches to embrace international picks, and they've nominated Lucas Zoll twice, though, you know, for black and white movies. The cinematography here is by no means a traditional pick. Again, it's often a category for like most pretty images in a movie. And this doesn't quite fall into that category, but in terms of its effectiveness and how interesting the technique is, I think that they might go for it. The score from Mika Levi is not the lengthiest. There's probably under 15 minutes, maybe even under 10 minutes total of music, unless they had a role in like some sound design or ambient work that I'm barely noticing. But it stands out so much. It has so much character in this movie and every single review is going to mention it. I think that Mika Levi could be in for their second nom. The sound design and production design are also elements that are worthy of praise and they really stand out. Again, none of the elements of this movie would be like traditional crafts for the Oscars to go for, but they'd be very worthy of the honor. Kind of like in the way that like the father got production design. Does the movie barely slip into picture and just get like international and director or does it end up being like a, a number seven contender and a couple texts come along with it or is it even higher than that? Does it sneak in for editing or screenplay despite there being very minimal dialogue? I don't think it'll go that high. Right now, I would probably have it in for like Picture Director International and then a couple texts. And there's definitely a world where it just doesn't get Best Picture, but I still think it's gonna get Best Director. Sandra Huller is getting some buzz, but I honestly don't really buy it. The performances in this movie just are not like in any way, shape or form awardsy. And if you want to nominate Sandra Huller, I highly recommend you nominate her for Anatomy of a Fall instead. It's actually going to annoy me if I see her getting actress nominations for this movie and not that. But yeah, that's where I'm at with the movie awards wise. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Where's your zone of interest?